It will be important that you follow along in this video. I'm going to give you directions on what to write. You don't have to write down what I've written as the guide. You're just going to write your responses. Usually your responses will be numbered one or two. You can label them, but you don't have to as long as they're done. That's what's most important. Keep in mind that the purpose of annotations is to slow down your reading. So we're not in a race to get this reading done. We are in a marathon to get it done well and thoughtfully. So please keep that in mind also. Our short story is The Lie by Kurt Vonnegut. Before we start reading, we're gonna set a purpose. The title is The Lie. So write down two motivations for lying. Don't waste time writing the word predict or lying, just numbers one and two, and give me two clear predictions. It was early springtime. Weak sunshine lay cold on old gray frost. Willow twigs against the sky showed the golden haze of fat catkins about to bloom. A black Rolls Royce streaked up the Connecticut Turnpike from New York City. At the wheel was Ben Barkley, a black chauffeur. So I'm going to have you react to that first paragraph. What feelings does that paragraph bring out? Identify two. What parts of the setting make readers feel this? Identify two. Pause the video as needed to complete your annotations. Keep it under the speed limit, Ben, said Dr. Remenzel. I don't care how ridiculous any speed limit seems. Stay under it. No reason to rush. We have plenty of time. Ben eased off the throttle. Seems like in the springtime she wants to get up and go, he said. Do what you can to keep her down, okay, said the doctor. Yes, sir, said Ben. He spoke in a lower voice to the 13-year-old boy who was riding beside him, to Eli Remenzel, the doctor's son. Ain't just people and animals feel good in the springtime, he said to Eli. Motors feel good, too. Mm said Eli. Everything feel good, said Ben. Don't you feel good? Sure, sure I feel good, said Eli emptily. Should feel good going to that wonderful school, said Ben. The wonderful school was the White Hill School for Boys, a private preparatory school in North Marston, Massachusetts. That was where the Rolls Royce was bound. The plan was that Eli would enroll for the fall semester while his father, a member of the class of 1939, attended a meeting of the Board of Overseers of the school. Take a moment to make sure your annotations are complete. Define throttle as you understand it. Make sure you highlight emptily and put a star next to it. Um, ask Eli two questions. And you can't see that there are two in the picture, but there are two questions that you need to ask. Don't believe this boy's feeling so good, doctor, said Ben. He wasn't particularly serious about it. It was more a genial springtime blather. Pause the video as needed to complete annotations. What's the matter, Eli, said the doctor absently. He was studying blueprints, plans for a 37-room addition to the Eli Remenzel Memorial Dormitory, a building named in honor of his great-great-grandfather. Dr. Remenzel had the plans draped over a walnut table that folded out of the back of the front seat. He was a massive, dignified man, a physician, a healer for healing's sake, since he had been born as rich as the Shah of Iran. Worried about something? He asked Eli without looking up from the plans. Nope, said Eli. Eli's lovely mother, Sylvia, sat next to the doctor, reading the catalog of the White Hill School. If I were you, she said to Eli, I'd be so excited I could hardly stand it. The best four years of your whole life are just about to begin. Sure, said Eli. He didn't show her his face. He gave her only the back of his head a pinwheel of coarse brown hair above a stiff white collar to talk to. I wonder how many Remenzels have gone to White Hill, said Sylvia. That's like asking how many people are dead in a cemetery, said the doctor. 
he gave the answer to the old joke and to Sylvia's question too. All of them. So at this point in your annotations, you should be thinking about Dr. Amenzel's personality, two words that would describe him, and make a connection so far in this story. What is this similar to and why? So this is similar to and because. If all the Remenzels who went to White Hill were numbered, what number would Eli be? said Sylvia. That's what I'm getting at. The question annoyed Dr. Remenzel a little. It didn't seem in very good taste. It isn't the thort sort of thing you keep score on, he said. Guess, said his wife. Oh, he said, you'd have to go back through all the records, all the way back to the end of the 18th century, even to make any kind of guess. You'd have to decide whether to count the Schofields and the Haley's and the McLeelands as Remenzels. Please make a guess, said Sylvia. Just people whose last name were Remenzel. Oh, the doctor shrugged, rattled the plans. 30 maybe. So you want to finish up your annotations. Evaluate how and why the author is using realism. So you're just going to answer that question and you want to create a visual. Your visual should represent any of the following character, personality, conflict, or thematic development. Remember our two themes or thematic topics, I should say, are coming of age and identity. And you want to make some inferences about the identity roles besides son, father, and wife. What do you? Th what role is Eli taking on in this uh, on this page? Doctor Amenzel, what is a role that he is taking on? And Sylvia, what is an additional role besides mom that she is? Pause the video as needed to complete annotations. You're going to start this section of your annotations by making a clear prediction. A prediction tells what will happen and why it will happen. So Eli is number 31, said Sylvia, delighted with the number. You're number 31, dear, she said to the back of Eli's head. Dr. Remenzel rattled the plans again. I don't want him going around saying something asinine like he's number 31, he said. Eli knows better than that, said Sylvia. She was a game, ambitious woman with no money of her own at all. She had been married for 16 years, but was still openly curious and enthusiastic about the ways of families that had been rich for many generations. Just for my own curiosity, not so Eli can go around saying what number he is, said Sylvia. I'm going to go wherever they keep the records and find out what number he is. That's what I'll do while you're at the meeting and Eli's doing whatever he has to do at the admissions office. So at this point, you should make sure you have an inference about what Dr. Remenzel's concern is and react to how Sylvia makes the readers feel and why. All right, said Dr. Remenzel, you go right ahead and do that. I will, said Sylvia. I think things like that are interesting, even if you don't. She waited for a rise on that, but didn't get one. Sylvia enjoyed arguing with her husband about her lack of reserve and his excess of it. Enjoyed saying toward the end of arguments like that, well, I guess I'm just a simple-minded country girl at heart, and that's all I'll ever be, and I'm afraid you're going to have to get used to it. But Dr. Remenzel didn't want to play that game. He found the dormitory plans more interesting. Will the new rooms have fireplaces? said Sylvia. In the older part of the dormitory, several of the rooms had handsome fireplaces. That would practically double the cost of construction, said the doctor. I want Eli to have a room with a fireplace, if that's possible, said Sylvia. Those rooms are for seniors. Okay, so here you need to infer, think about what type of person Sylvia is. I thought maybe through some fluke, said Sylvia. What kind of fluke do you have in mind, said the doctor. You mean I should demand that Eli be given a room with a fireplace? Not 
Demand, said Sylvia. Request firmly, said the doctor. Maybe I'm just a simple-minded country girl at heart, said Sylvia. But I look through this catalog and I see all the buildings named after Remenzels, look through the back of the, and see all of the hundreds of thousands of dollars given by Remenzels for scholarships. And I just can't help thinking people named Remenzel are entitled to ask for a little extra. Let me tell you in no uncertain terms, said Dr. Remenzel, that you are not to ask for anything special for Eli. Not anything. Of course I won't, said Sylvia. Why do you always think I'm going to embarrass you? For the two sections we just read, you need to make a connection, text to self, text to world, text to text, or and a reaction. How is this section making readers feel and why? I don't he said. But I can still think what I think, can't I? She said. If you have to, he said. If I have to, she said cheerfully, utterly unrepentant. She leaned over the plans. You think those people will like the rooms? What people, he said. The Africans, she said. She was talking about 30 Africans who, at the request of the State Department, were being admitted to Whitehill in the coming semester. It was because of them that the dormitory was being expanded. Those rooms aren't for them, he said. They aren't going to be segregated. Oh, said Sylvia. She thought about this a while, and then she said, is there a chance Eli will have one of them? for a roommate. Okay, so make sure you define the word unrepentant and your final annotation should be to ask Eli two specific questions based on this section and also to create an image that would kind of summarize this section. It does Freshmen draw lots for roommates, said the doctor. That piece of information is in the catalog, too. Eli, said Sylvia. Hmm, said Eli. How would you feel about it if you had to room with one of those Africans? Eli shrugged listlessly. That's all right, said Sylvia. Eli shrugged again. I guess it's all right, said Sylvia. It had better be, said the doctor. The Rolls Royce pulled abreast of an old Chevrolet, a car in such bad repair that its back door was lashed shut with clothesline. Dr. Remenzo glanced casually at the driver, and then, with sudden excitement and pleasure, he told Ben Barkley to stay abreast of the car. If you notice for the annotations, you're going to infer what Eli's feeling and evaluate how Kurt Vonnegut is contrasting these two families with that brief descriptive paragraph. The doctor leaned across Sylvia, rolled his window down, yelled at to the driver of the old Chevrolet, Tom, Tom! The man was a White Hill classmate of the doctor. He wore a White Hill necktie, which he waved at Dr. Remenzel in gay recognition. And then he pointed to the fine young son who sat beside him, conveyed with proud smiles and nods that the boy was bound for White Hill. Dr. Remenzo pointed to the chaos of the back of Eli's head, beamed that his news was the same. In the wind, blustering between the two cars, they made a lunch date at the Holly House in North Marston, at the inn whose principal business was serving visitors to White Hill. All right, said Dr. Menzel to Ben Barkley. Drive on. You know, said Sylvia, somebody really ought to write an article. And she turned to look through the back window of the old car, now shuddering far behind. Somebody really ought to. So for this section of annotations, you want to make a prediction. Make sure you tell what will happen and why. So don't forget the because. And you want to ask Sylvia one specific question. What should the article be about, 
said the doctor. He noticed that Eli had slumped way down in the front seat. Eli, he said sharply, sit up straight. He turned his attention to Sylvia. Most people think prep schools are such snobbish things just for people with money, said Sylvia. But that isn't true. She leafed through the catalog and found the quotation she was after. Quote, the White Hill School operates on the assumption, she read, that no boy should be deterred from applying for admission because his family is unable to pay the full cost of a White Hill education. With this in mind, the admissions committee selects each year from approximately 3,000 candidates the 150 most promising and deserving boys regardless of their parents' ability to pay the full $2,200 tuition. And those in need of financial aid are given it to the full extent of their need. In certain instances, the school will even pay for clothing and transportation of a boy. Sylvia shook her head. I think that's perfectly amazing. It's something most people don't realize at all. A truck driver's son can come to White Hill if he's smart enough. He said, thanks to the Remenzels, said Sylvia with pride, and a lot of other people too, said the doctor. Sylvia read out loud again. In 1799, Eli Remenzel laid the foundation for the present scholarship fund by donating to the school 40 acres in Boston. The school still owns 12 of those acres, their current evaluation being $3 million. Eli, said the doctor, sit up. What's the matter with you? Eli sat up again, but began to slump almost immediately like a snowman in the sun. So, of course, you want to think about the importance of that final simile in that paragraph. You want to create a visual that kind of tells you a little bit about White Hill. And at this point, I'd also like you to make a connection to yourself. Think about the family dynamics in this story, how parents and children interact and communicate. Think about identity and growing up or coming of age specifically when you make your connection. So as we read through the next section, you want to infer Eli's motivation for his actions. You want to react to what he does. And you want to think about how his parents' choices for how they have parented him have affected Eli's identity and why. Eli had good reason for slumping for actually hoping to die or disappear. He could not bring himself to say what the reason was. He slumped because he knew he had been denied admission to White Hill. He had failed the entrance examinations. Eli's parents did not know this because Eli had found the awful notice in the mail and had torn it up. Dr. Remenzo and his wife had no doubts whatsoever about their sons getting into White Hill. It was inconceivable to them that Eli could not go there. So they had had no curiosity as to how Eli had done on the examinations. They were not puzzled when no report card ever came. As you listen to this next section, you're gonna create a visual for how his parents, specifically his father's words, will affect Eli. What all will Eli have to do to enroll? Said Sylvia as the black Rolls Royce crossed the Rhode Island border. I don't know, said the doctor. I suppose they've got it all complicated now with forms to be filled out in quadruplicate and punch card machines and bureau cats. This business of entrance examinations is all new too. In my day, a boy simply had an interview with the headmaster. The headmaster would look at him over, ask him a few questions, and then say, There's a White Hill boy. Did he ever say, There isn't a White Hill boy? said Sylvia. Oh, sure, said Dr. Menzel. If a boy was impossibly stupid or something. 
There have to be standards. There have always been standards. The African boys have to meet the standards just like anybody else. There aren't, they aren't getting in just because the State Department wants to make friends. We made that clear. These boys had to meet the standards. And did they? I suppose, said Dr. Menzel. I heard they were all in, and they all took the same examination Eli did. Was it a hard examination, dear? Sylvia asked Eli. It was the first time she thought to ask. Um, said Eli. What? she said. Yes, said Eli. I'm glad they've got high standards, she said. And then she realized this was a fairly still, silly statement. Of course they've got high standards, she said. That's why it's such a famous school. That's why people who go there do so well in later life. Sylvia resumed her reading of the catalog again, opened out a folding map of the sward, as the campus of White Hill was traditionally called. She read off the names of features that memorialized Remenzels, the Sanford Remenzel Bird Sanctuary, the George McClellan Remenzel Skating Rink, the Eli Remenzel Memorial Dormitory, and then she read out loud a quatrain printed on one corner of the map. When night falleth gently upon the greensward, it's White Hill, dear White Hill, our thoughts all turn toward... Make sure you ask Eli two thoughtful questions based on this section. You know, said Sylvia, school songs are so corny when you just read them. But when I hear the glee club sing those words, they sound like the most beautiful words ever written and I want to cry. Um, said Dr. Amenzel. Did a Remenzel write them? I don't think so, said Dr. Amenzel. And then he said, no, wait, that's the new song. A Romenzel didn't write it. Tom Hillier wrote it. The man in that old car we passed? Sure, said Dr. Romenzel. Tom wrote it. I remember when he wrote it. A scholarship boy wrote it, said Sylvia. I think that's awfully nice. He was a scholarship boy, wasn't he? His father was an ordinary automobile mechanic in North Marston. Your final annotations for this section is to make a clear prediction. Please don't forget the because. What do you think will happen and why? And also, I'd like you to give Eli some advice at this point. He's in quite a predicament. What would you advise Eli to do? Why do you think that might work?